This morning, we are having speakers times two. Clark wasn't able to uh, speak for us today, but we have Mel, who is with her parents uh, in Missouri or Iowa or someplace, with her father and mother. Her father has a cousin that's celebrating the 90th birthday, and so Mel had made plans several months ago to take her parents. So to start this morning, I believe we have a video that Mel has prepared for us. Stormy? Hi. So sorry to not be with you guys this week, but long before Barney quit, I told my dad that I would take him to Missouri to celebrate with his cousin who is turning 90 this week. My whole calendar sermon setup has gone a little crazy during the month of July, and I've had to scramble to uh, get things set up. But the scripture say in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, we must not quit meeting together as some are doing. No, we need to keep on encouraging each other. This becomes more and more important as you see the day getting closer. So I hope that you're here today and encouraging each other and especially encouraging those that are sharing this morning. Today was to be a speaker times three service, but the crazy kind of worked its way in today's service as well. As you see in the bulletin, I asked Dave Hauk and Clark Torson to share. I also approached three others, but for various reasons they declined. Three swings, three misses. In baseball, it means you're out. And so here I am trying to make up and share a little bit through media. You know, but the whole idea of three swings, three misses, and maybe not out brought to mind another story. A very familiar story to you. The story happened in the life of Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. At the Last Supper, Jesus said to his disciples, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written that I will strike the shepherd and the flock will be scattered. But we know Peter, and he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and even to death. And Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same thing. So what about that promise? Today I want to look a little bit at Matthew 26, 69 through 75. First of all, we turn to the courtyard of the high priest. Christ is there standing trial after his arrest. And verses 69 and 70 say that Peter was standing by the fire. And one of the serving girls of the high priest came by. And when she saw him standing there warming herself, she looked at him closely. Uh, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about. Strike one. Next verse, then he went into the gateway. Maybe it was a little bit darker there. Maybe there weren't quite as many people around. We don't know. But another girl saw him and said, hey, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again, this time with an oath. That means he swore on something sacred that he was telling the truth. But he wasn't telling the truth. He lied and he said, I don't know the man. Strike two. Then later, another went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for you are Galilean, and your accent gives you away. Now, we take note of the fact here that Peter has already lied twice and he's boxed himself into a corner. And so, so now in order to save his own skin, he reverts to vulgar language and cursing, which is probably he hadn't something he hadn't used since he decided to follow Christ. And he swore to them, I don't know this man that you're talking about. Strike three. Just as he was speaking, in that moment, the rooster began to crow. Then the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down 
and wept bitterly. Peter's disqualified. We might even say he's out of the game. He who the rock, who was the rock on which the church was to be built, Peter, who thought he could stand, had fallen. You know, and Matthew does not specifically mention Peter again in the script in his book. And I'm assuming Peter's swaggering, his boasting, and his arrogance were probably gone. You know, that's not the end of Peter, however. He has three strikes against him, but he's not out. Let's say you're playing a game of baseball, and you're in the bottom of the ninth. The bases are loaded, and one run, only one run, will win the game. And if you're the hitter, and you come to play, and you strike out, then you've lost the game, and the game is over. But you know, long as long as we're living, life is not, not just one game. Life is a series of games, and we have a fresh start, a new chance, and we have to keep swinging. And Peter kept swinging. In John 21, 15 through 19, we again see the number three, but this time it's not failure, it's restoration. Jesus three times pitches to Peter. He asks, Peter, do you love me? And he asks again, and he asks again. And three times Peter swings, saying, Yes, Lord, I love you. And Peter hits. Because in verse 19, Jesus indicates Peter's death, and he wants us to know that his death would glorify God. And then Peter said, and then Christ said, Follow me. So what about Peter? Yes, great was his rejection, but greater still was his repentance. Yes, great was his denial, but greater still was his dedication. And yes, great was his loss, but greater still was his life. What about you? Have you ever struck out? Have you ever failed Christ so badly that you felt completely miserable and like you were a failure? Have you rejected him? Then seek greater repentance. Have you denied him? Then strive for greater dedication. Do you feel as though you've lost? You know, then claim his life for your own. These are some things that I think are great. I hope you guys have a great service and I miss you while I'm gone and I just want you to know that I'm praying for you this morning. See you later. Please. Can you all hear me? When Mel said she wanted seven to nine minutes, I think we're going to get out of church early today. So. <laughs> and I seem to be on a different page than everybody else. I think God's working in our lives and we don't even see it. When something good happens, we usually attribute it either to luck or circumstances. We fail to give credit to God who is blessing us or extending his mercy to us. We fail to recognize God in so many ways we take it for granted. Many of you know I took supplies to Kansas. Little did I know God was getting things ready before there was mention of doing anything. <clears throat> I get nervous, so. Uh, my son-in-law uses my trailer to move hay from the fields to his home or from my place to his. Everyone knows there's a difference between tires that are good enough for around home and tires which you would take on a trip. For some reason, people ask him to deliver hay for them. Here God is at work. The tires were good enough for round home, but not good enough for making trips hauling hay. He replaced the tires that were getting thin, thus getting my trailer ready for the trip to Kansas. But his circumstances are God. I leased my truck to Noel Trucking 
pull their trailer and use their authority and their insurance. When telling them about taking supplies, was asked how much I was going to charge them, said nothing. It was my way of helping somebody in need. In Luke 10, 36, 10, 30 through 36, we are told to love our neighbor. Sometimes our neighbor might be just down, down the street, a block away, a mile down the road, or 100 miles away. I'm sure the Samaritan did not know who he was helping, and he said, instead he saw a need and did what he could. Hoping this will help witness for God. Several times I did not have a good answer when they asked me if God is so powerful, why he lets bad things happen to good people. Never had a good answer and never will. I just have to trust God knows best. In 1 Corinthians 12, we are told the church is compared to the human body, which consists of many parts, each doing different things and having a different purpose. <clears throat> Bill put a pose that showed people in need. In turn, it spoke to my heart. The next Sunday, I told Bill, if you can get fencing supplies together, I'll haul them. Bill said he would talk to the men in the Bible study and see what they could do. After talking with Bill, and on my way out of church, Satan used two of his tools, fear and doubt. <sighs> Saying, why did you volunteer to take your truck to Kansas? You don't even like going different places with your truck. Sometimes you can't find parking. Certain roads and certain places are not truck, truck friendly. You're stupid for doing this. Cheryl was waiting in the car, and she asked Bill what Bill and I were talking about. For those that don't know her well, she has a sixth sense. She has my check engine light. <laughs> she is the little light that comes home when something is wrong in your car. Don't like to admit it. Had I listened to her, I would have saved myself many headaches. I told her, said I was taking a load of supplies to Kansas. If they could round them up, her only comment was when do you plan to leave? And I asked that many times. Bill talked with the men at the Bible study. Gary and Larry said they would talk with the Bible study. Gary and Larry said they would talk to different people if supplies could be donated. As it turned out, there was an instant donations to load the trailer. People in our church, other people, People who did not go to church all gave. He asked what the meaning of this. If there's a need, we need to help if we can. The good Samaritan saw a need, did not know the person, but stopped to help. We passed many things which could come. We passed many things which could help our neighbor. Little things, just like opening a door, the list could go on. <clears throat> this is where the body of church comes in. Remember, there are different parts of the body. We don't do the same thing. All parts are important. I have a truck, but what good is a truck without a load to haul? Without Bill, Gary, and Larry getting the dona donations, there would have been no load to haul. If there had been, been no asking, people would not have given. People gave when asked. It takes everyone to make something work. With just a little part missing, projects will never start or will never stop. Or 
or will come to a stop. Think about a car. Just a little key gets everything started. You could be that key that starts something. Don't miss on that blessing because you think you're a small, small part. Thank you, David. David took his truck to Kansas and I think went well over a thousand miles down and back. And we've had some reports of things that have happened down there. And I think Bill has been down once or twice taking more supplies and cattle. So uh, it all started with, with Dave and Bill talking about it. So we thank you and we appreciate you taking the time and the two or three days that it took to do that, Dave. We really appreciate it. 